Hello and welcome to Next Day Solar. We're here in London and we're installing a small 1.6 kilowatt peak system to the flat roof just above me here in London. Now 1.6 kilowatt peak is quite a small system but if the average UK home is using about 4,000 kilowatt hours a year that's almost half of the energy consumption of the home. With gas prices going up, electricity prices going up, this homeowner wanted to see if they could use the power of the sun to reduce some of their bills and also do their bit for the planet. We hope you enjoy watching this video and if you are thinking about installing solar panels on your roof, whether it's a tile roof or a flat roof you'll find lots of information contained in this video to help you make the right choice when you come to your project thank you first part is to actually measure out the bracketry cut the bracketry to size and install the brackets that's what we're doing now far easier to do it down here on the ground rather than 10 meters up on the roof um, much safer in this way as well so that's what we're doing Okay, so I just want to give you an overview quickly of the topology of the home. So this is the power supply coming into the home, coming into a smart meter. It's great to have a smart meter fitted because it means we as solar installers don't need to install an additional energy meter. It's not a problem to install an additional energy meter. It's quite low cost to do. But if you are thinking about solar PV, get in touch with your energy supplier, be that Eon or anyone else, and get them to install a smart meter. It's free for you and it also helps with your billing. That then moves into a switch, just an isolator, so we can safely work on any of the equipment. In this home, we've got a generator switch over. So this actually allows the home user to plug in a small generator and if there was a power cut, actually run the home off generator by flicking that switch there. One of the first things that we're installing is called a solar eye boost. Now the benefit for solar eye boost is it takes any additional energy, any spare energy that the house isn't using, and instead of pushing it back to the grid, it pushes it to the immersion heater. So most immersion heaters, hot water tanks, which are situated in a loft within a home, if they have got one, and if they haven't got one, it would be a combi boiler, which is the small boiler. So if it's in a slightly larger property, you'll generally have in a, in a tank, hot water tank, with an immersion coil, one or two. In this property, there are two. Now the immersion heater is normally three kilowatts, and what we're doing here is we're going to be wiring this solar eye boost upstairs and that will sense when there's excess solar energy, electrical energy being pushed back to the grid and instead divert it to the solar eye boost to the immersion heater which means that all electrical energy that's excess will be directed to a hot water tank a heating coil to reduce the home's gas requirement as well. So not only are we going to reduce the energy, electrical energy requirement, we're going to reduce the gas requirement. Now if you have a little look here, very easy to do, you fit a clamp on the positive string senses when energy is being fed back to the grid or drawn into the home. Small transmitter there which will transmit wirelessly to this box which we're going to install in the loft once we've wired it up and it will simply, the rest is magic. And if you need to override it and put the immersion heater on, there's a boost function there as well and it will also keep tabs on how much electrical energy has been used to perform the hot water function. So if you are thinking about solar for a pretty low cost, it's a much better way of actually using that energy rather than pushing back to the grid. If you're pushing back to the grid, today's rate is about 5p, but actually gas and heating, one is bad for the planet, the gas, and two is obviously quite expensive. So this is a good way of saving a bit of money as well. So if you are undergoing a project, do have a think about something like this. Well, we are in the loft space and we fitted the solar edge inverter. Um, we've put a board up here just to make the connections. We've got the solar eye boost we spoke about earlier in the video and that will take excess electrical energy and it will push it to the hot water tank, which is over there, currently wrapped up. And then we've just got a simple consumer board um, where we're gonna be wiring in the inverter and then we'll continue to fit the isolators. We are doing the DC and AC isolators for both the inverter and the board. Next step is to run the DC cables and put it into the DC isolator. We are on the roof of the property right now, so what we're trying to do right now is to fit in the cables from here to actually the loft through this hole.
just to uh, give you a quick overview. So we've got the solar inverter that's been installed. It's one and a half kilowatt inverter. Um, it's got its DC cables wired ready for connection. They come through the back of this into a DC isolator. This is part of regulation to make sure that the customer uh, and ourselves when we're commissioning can isolate the supply safely. So if you need to work downstream on the box, you'd be isolating your DC as well as other things. This is the AC isolator. So there's already power in this loft. Now, if you have a loft space, you haven't got power, you might well have lighting. If you've got lighting, great. If you've got a heater in the loft or a boiler, you're likely to have power. Doesn't mean if you haven't got power in a certain location, that'll be a problem. We can always run power from another location to it. So that's the first step. If you haven't got any electrics in the loft, we can always bring it up. It's like you've got lights down below and you can pull from that, pull from that circuit up. Now, part of the regulations is to make sure you have a separate board, a separate consumer board, so that the inverter sits on its own circuit. It needs to be on its own protected circuit. So that's what we have here, a board here. And we've got two circuits. One is for the inverter and one is for a, um, a iBoost, which is powering the immersion heater, which we've connected up as well. We've run the solar strings all the way around the loft and up to where we had access. Uh, it was a rainwater gully, actually, which we used to take advantage of to ensure that the cables are brought down to the loft area or home in a safe and secure way. Part of MCS guidelines, it's an accreditation scheme, is that cables must be well secured and can't move around when they are brought down to this space. So that's what we've done today. We're gonna to test the panels, check that they're all okay, and then the next day, which is tomorrow, we'll be laying the panels on the loft, doing all the testing, doing all the commissioning, adding stickers, labeling, checking that the inverter works in the way that it should. For instance, if there's a power cut, the inverter cuts off, um, commission the system and get the customer up and running. Jump out the sun, please. Yeah, 140. Right, it's working now. Just a quick update from me on the roof here. So we've got the bracketry in place and set up. We've got the first panel in, we've got the optimizer on, um, and we've connected the cabling. So we've connected an in and out to the optimizer, and then we've paired up for each of the panels. So you've got cables for each panel ready. We've got the ballast tray in, we've got 200 kilos of ballast coming to help keep the panels down. So we're almost there. So next steps really, ballast in, got the wind safe shield on to deflect any wind. Last couple of panels in, and we're just popping downstairs into the loft to set up the optimizer. It needs pairing with the inverter. So, uh, yeah, so far going well. Well, we're up on the roof, we've finished the job. It's four 405 watt REC panels actually here. Um, this is a flat grid system. You can see it's ballasted by these concrete blocks here. We've had to increase the ballast weight by 50% because we're near the edge of the roof, as you can see. We've been helped by this small ridge that you can see around there that protects and protects the panels from shading. These are wind safe to block the wind coming in to stop lifting the panels up and you've got proper brackets which has all been secured down. It looks very smart actually with an all black system. In the centre is the power optimizer that takes power from all of the panels and sends it down into the loft and the inverter that you've seen us fit before. It's been a good job, it's been quite simple, less than two days. You've obviously got a new roof covering down as well and if you are thinking about how you can do your bit for the planet and save on your energy bills, uh, do consider us and do consider uh, installing solar PV is a great way of making a difference, reducing your energy bills and doing your bit for the planet and there needs to be a balanced approach. The UK is doing really well with wind, we need more solar and as more people have electric cars in the future it's going to be important and down to homeowners or, or people with properties to put solar PV on the roof to make use of what was just a dead space. You know this roof's been here for 70, 80 years, never generated a kilowatt of power and now hopefully in years to come it will generate lots of energy. Should be very low maintenance, we'll pop up once a year, give the panels a wipe down, check everything's in place. We've tied all the cabling down so nothing moves and rubs about and that's it. So here we are finishing up in London, we'll do a final commission in the loft, make sure everything's good and see you again soon. Thanks for watching.